I enjoy being able to bring a moment of joy to others simply by sharing something I lived through, something I've witnessed, or the way that I think. But then a- another part is I'm at a different stage in my life and lifestyle. Right now I'm married, I have a son, so I'm, I'm no longer dating. I was cleaning out some stuff in my house. I had this, I found this box. I found a whole bunch of other letters and pictures and so I'm just deleting everything because it doesn't make sense for me to still have it. Um, but with it, it reminded me of a lot of the people I used to date. And I was like, oh, wait a minute. There's some funny stories. That's a funny experience about all of this. So let's put it all into a single package and release it on the stage and have fun with it. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for Mr. Jaya Tola. Woo! Oh my goodness. I will I will say that I was um I was more excited than I was nervous coming out here, but uh seeing a few of the people I used to date here, I don't know. <laughs> I <laughs> Might be a little nervous. I didn't think they would show up. They was like, I ain't talked to them in 15 years. I'll just shoot them a text and now they want to come out. They probably want to see if I'm going to talk about them. Uh, but the show must go on. <laughs> the show, thank y'all, thank y'all for coming. Y'all know who y'all are. Thank y'all for, uh, thank y'all for coming. I mean, the, uh, these jokes are going to be uh, nice-ish. Uh, <laughs> but I appreciate y'all for coming. Uh, I don't mean to point at you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I like to start off my shows by giving you guys a quick profile of who I am. Just a quick rundown, just so we can get to know each other really, really quick. Uh, born and raised in Southside Richmond. Uh, I was raised by my mother and my grandmother. Uh, white people, shut up. I knew my daddy. Um, <laughs> and he wasn't in jail. I was like, oh, typical black dude from Richmond. <laughs> he just divorced. My mom and dad got divorced. That's all. Uh, I've been in IT for about 12 years. Married. Um, I have a son. We have a son that's a year old. Um, what's cool, what... Uh, I don't even I don't know if cool is the right word, but I it's been a year since my son has been born and I'm still trying to figure out how to tell my wife about him. Uh, I'm joking, it's hers. I'm joking, it's hers, it's hers. I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, father, um, I'm a Pisces. Uh, and one thing that I don't normally share, I shared it before and people told me I should start sharing it more often. I'm a six-year US Navy veteran's nephew. Uh, I didn't serve, my uncle served, but I am proud. I am proud nonetheless. Yeah, man. You having a good time so far? Excellent. Excellent. That is warming to hear. Um, you know how some people remember a face, some people remember a name. I remember feet. I, uh, shut up. I, got, <laughs> I have a foot fetish. I, I love a woman's foot. I don't know what it is, but I, I check everything about a woman's foot. The shape of the arch, the skin tone, the texture. I count the knuckles on their toe. Just see mallet toe, claw toe, hammer toe. What do we have? The shape of the toes. Is it Egyptian shape? Is it Romanian? Like You can Google all the... Like, I check everything about a woman's foot. I am serious about my foot fetish. I remember um, back in my club days, I used to hate when women will take off their shoes and walk barefoot to the car. Why do y'all, don't do that, that's disgusting. Like, uh, you, you can get like foot COVID now, I think. I don't, I don't know, but just don't do that. But I remember being in a club, this girl ready to come home, she takes off her shoes, walk barefoot to the car, we get to the crib, and she tries to hop right in the bed. I said, uh, these sheets are white, like you can't, you can't get in this bed with your outside feet. You, we are inside now. You need to go and take a shower and wash those feet. 
And she gonna walk over to her purse. Well, I got baby wipes in the purse. I'll just use. I'm like, unless those baby wipes have bleach, you need a bath on the foot. Like we can't, we can't do it like that. Like a, the one component that I didn't used to check was the size of a woman's foot. I never knew a woman's foot size could be a game changer. Not a deal breaker, but a game changer. <laughs> Had to switch up some things. Just dated this Bigfoot girl. Um, <laughs> didn't think nothing about the size of her feet till I was giving her a foot massage. She had the most beautiful pair of feet I've ever seen. And I'm giving her a foot massage. Then I go to suck her toes. And I start gagging. I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, baby. This, this is dingling size. Like, I don't, I don't know what it's like to have a whole ding dong in my mouth, but this was, well, I don't know why I said whole ding dong. I don't know what it's like to have a half of a ding dong or any part of, in fact, I don't like anything about ding dongs. I hate the treat. I ripped the, the doorbell off my house because I don't like the sound that it makes. Not a ding dong man, but this, but this toe almost clipped off that hanging piece in the back of my throat. It was like, one more swipe, it would have. <laughs> So I get the ladies, I get the ladies, size matters. I understand, uh, I, I understand now. You guys, you guys have been on to something for a minute. <laughs> we all have things we like. We all have, um, we all have, we all have our pet peeves. We all have things that bother us, things that annoy us. One of the key things to do is to get to know your partners, things that you can tolerate, things that you can't tolerate. That's what makes for a good relationship. If your partner has something that you can't tolerate, then inevitably it's going to crash, right? Either you have to change your toleration level or you got to date somebody else that, for them to have habits that you can tolerate. Like uh, for me, like I, one of my things, I bite my toenails. Uh, I know. First of all, uh, I'm flexible enough to get my foot to my mouth. So uh, shut up. <laughs> but I'm one of those, like I don't, I don't feel like if I'm in a living room and I notice that my toenails are long, then I'm not gonna go upstairs to get the, the, the grooming kit. The, I'm just in the, I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna just I'm gonna just bite them off. So that's something that the women have to. Well, I can't say. Oh, I'm married now, so let me say that. Uh, <laughs> so that's something I had to tell my wife in the beginning. But it was one of those things that I would tell dates um, if we became intimate. Like if I just slip up, bite my fingernail, bite my toenail, something you gotta be cool with. One of my things is I'm I don't like bad morning breath. I'm, I'm, I'm big. I'm big, like, cause since I've been married, every day without fail, I wake up, I tell my wife, I love you, I give her a kiss, and we say a prayer. And that's every, that's every day um, since we've been married. So if I wake up, go to kiss her, tell her I love her, we go to pray, and it smell like you've been praying to Satan. Like, I, like I, think, I think we can divorce for that. Like, it's somewhere in the Bible. I don't, I don't know, I think that's grounds for a divorce. But because I'm, I'm big on that. And uh, it could have been, you know, just hurt from previous relationships. I used to date a girl. She had morning breath around the clock. It made no sense to me. I'm like, she would come over for dinner. I'm like, how do you have morning breath at 8 p.m.? This is supper time. Like, what? what is your sleep schedule? Like, you stop taking naps. You don't get to take afternoon naps because we, <laughs> we can't deal with this. And uh, so for me, here's what I used to do. And if you're dealing with someone at home right now who has a breath issue, here's what I used to do with that particular girl. When she came over, I would leave her sitting in the living room. I'd run back to the bathroom, take a shot of Listerine, I'd hold it. I'd come back out, I'd grab her, I'd kiss her. I'd just slowly <laughs> seep the Listerine in her mouth. And then I'd tickle her, choke her, force her to gargle it. <laughs> I used to cook all the time. I would always cook something with rice. I chopped Tic Tacs up in a rice. <laughs> Your rice is always so crunchy and minty. Says, yeah, it's one of my breath recipes, my best, my best recipes. <laughs> I'm gonna share with you guys how, um, just how, how differently I think. Um, I always try to be an out of the box type of person. I never try to be typical. Um, I dated a girl who was infatuated with rings. She loved rings. She loved everything about a ring. She had all kinds of rings. Earring, tongue ring, toe ring, nipple ring. She loved rings. Her favorite movie was The Ring. Her favorite game growing up was Ring Around the Roses. 
She hated Barnum and Bailey, but she loved the Ringling Brothers. Like it was, it was, it was weird. Like, everything about Ring. So I'm dating her, and uh, Valentine's Day comes around, and I'm thinking I gotta do something Ring related, right? So I'm going, I'm going into my bag. I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm not a typical dude. What am I gonna do? Rings. All right, she's a Pisces. She's a Pisces like me. That's an amethyst birthstone. Maybe get her some earrings the color of her birthstone, right? It's purple. But I'm like, yeah, but that's, that's typical. Any guy would think about that. Not me. I'm Jaya. I got to think something different. got to think way out the box. All right, think. Sexy, sexy. Valentine's Day. Okay. Maybe get her a belly ring in the shape of a Pisces. Right? The Pisces sign is represented by fish swimming in opposite direction. Now, make it, make it sound cute. I'll tell her it's a, it's a belly jellyfish. Right? But that's corny. And I'm also not corny. Like, I'm outside of the box and I'm not corny. Think, sexy, sexy, think. Then it hit me. I remember she said she didn't want to have any kids. So I got her the Nuva ring <laughs> in the shape of her zodiac. Like, <laughs> like, I paid that doctor so much money to bend that thing into that shape. She didn't appreciate it. So I'm like, you don't get it? She's like, no, nah, I don't get it. Why would you do that? Why would I want that? I'm like, one, we ain't got to use protection because you got something to block the babies from coming. Two, it's in the shape of a Pisces. Do you not understand that I just put fish in your fish tank? Like, how is this not so thoughtful? <laughs> Can I take my jacket off real quick? I'm sorry, guys. I'm getting, I'm getting warm. I appreciate you. I dated a girl from Petersburg, Virginia. <laughs> I don't know how familiar everyone is with that part, of, uh, that part of the state, but I have nothing bad to say about the girl that I dated. Uh, she was fine. Um, I have a problem with the city of Petersburg. Like, that, that is a horrible, trashy place. Like, I, I'm not afraid to say that publicly and in front of the masses. Uh, if you want to come to Virginia, don't. Just get past Petersburg. I, just, I don't understand how Petersburg holds the title of city. Like, Petersburg should be reduced to just area, region, this spot. Like, I don't know, like, but, it, but it maintains the title of city. And it, it makes me think, like, the city of Detroit filed for bankruptcy like 15 years ago. But Detroit has the Pistons, the Tigers, the Red Wings, the Blackhawks, all of these professional sports teams, that makes sense. Petersburg, Petersburg has a big lots. <laughs> yep, I think that's about it. <laughs> so how, how in the world is that place from today? Like, I go on to Petersburg's website, and you can check this out at petersburg-va.org. Somebody is maintaining a website for Petersburg. And the background picture is a picture of all these beautiful, immaculate buildings that are not in Petersburg. Because <laughs> I've never seen that when going through that city. Like, I've never seen them. So don't lie to me. Right? You read the website more, it goes on to talk about how important it was historically. There were like 38 safe stations during the Underground Railroad when Harriet Tubman was bringing slaves to the North. They had 38 safe spots to stay in Petersburg. And I'm looking like, dude, Petersburg still look like it got slaves. Like, what, <laughs> what do you mean the Underground Railroad? <laughs> like, I wouldn't be surprised if Harriet Tubman's granddaughter is still hiding in the Civic Center. <laughs> Talking about, is we free yet? Like, yes, yes we is. <laughs> we is free. I bowl. I love bowling. If it wasn't for stand-up, I probably would try to compete in professional bowling. I used to go all the time. I don't go as often as I do now, but I am a huge fan of the sport. Um, I'm going to talk about this bowling alley here in Richmond <laughs> on Melothian. Uh, the viewers, you guys might not know what I'm talking about. You can Google this place. I think it's uh, Bowl America, I think. Um, if, but if you Google it and look at it on the map, the bowl is is off. All they have is America on the ball. It is a horrible piece of trash bowling alley. I'm surprised that we have it in Richmond and it's not in Petersburg. Because this is, this is a horrible bowling alley. And nobody, anybody who bowls knows you never go there. Nobody ever goes there. But they advertise 
of a $5 all you can bowl special. And that's a steal, because bowling is expensive. So $5 all you can bowl, that's what attracted me, right? But all the signs were there for me not <laughs> to even go inside, right? One was the fact that the bowl was faded. All you saw was America. I mean, this is not America. Don't do that. Uh, I don't know if there was symbolism at play here. <laughs> Where did it look broken down and just say? But I'm like, whatever. So go in. They had 30 lanes. Only 10 of them worked. And out of those 10, two of them were carpeted. It's like, how? What kind of Velcro bowl in this? <laughs> I should have left. But like I said, I'm a three and out type of dude. This is just one strike, right? Asked the bro, hey man, it's five dollars all you can bowl. Is that for like all night or for like two hours? And he's like, oh no, nah, man, that's, that's for life. I was like, what? Five dollars all you can bowl for life. This place is doing so bad that you got five dollar lifetime memberships at a bowling alley. <laughs> but that's only two strikes. The third strike happened when I bowled, knocked the pins down. They didn't even have the machine to return the ball to me. It's a dude behind the lane just bowling the ball back up. <laughs> you are tripping. <laughs> I hate going to the doctor for one thing and then telling you something else that you didn't go for. I'm sure we've all had that experience. I'm sure we've all heard stories. I'll share mine. I went to the doctor for a sore throat. He does a swab. They're looking at things. He goes in the back. He comes back. He's like, 10 minutes later, I got good news and bad news. I said, okay. It's like, the good news is it's not strep. Okay. So far, so good. I like, so why is, it, why is it hurting so bad? He's like, actually, there's a toenail lodged in your tonsils. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I done bit my toenail so hard. <laughs> like, how? <laughs> how does that even work? And I was like, but what's the bad news? And he's like, well, the bad news is you have low sperm count. I'm like, how would you determine my sperm from my own throat? Like, I don't, that's not, that's not, how, this, that's not how this works. Same thing, from, same thing about mechanics, right? You go, you go to a mechanic for one thing, and then they tell you a bunch of other stuff that ain't got nothing to do with what you went for. I went to a mechanic for a check engine light. He does a little thing, 10 minutes. He puts a little machine under the steering wheel, 10 minutes. He says, okay, I got good news and bad news. I'm like, okay. He said, the good news is you just need a new spark plug. I said, okay, so far so good. He said, but the bad news is you have low sperm count. I was like, dude, how, how? <laughs> you make no sense. I used to date a girl who was into hoarding. Hoarding. You ever met any of these people who just collect stuff for no reason and just kept stash it and keep it in their house? She was a hoarder, and, and I don't know if there are any, if there's a such thing as uh, like organized hoarders. I don't know if that exists or if the hoarder in and of itself means that they're disorganized. I don't know. I haven't done research on hoardism, but she was a cluttery, junky hoarder person, right? It's like every time I went over there, it was something new that didn't belong. Right. It's something that I just got used to. Right. One day there's a flat basketball. And, and my first my first like, where did this even come from? Like you don't even have any kids. Who's playing with the whatever? Right? There's a new urn on the mantle, but nobody in her family died. Like I don't I don't know if she's planning to kill somebody or what I have no idea what's happening. Clothes all over the place. I'm like, you can just put the clothes in the washing machine. I don't even care if you start it. But this didn't we should have easy pathway to what we're doing in it. But so anyway, I got used to random things being found in her house, right? We go to her place one time after dinner, right? So it's dark, we walk in, and we can kind of see a shadow of a dude hiding behind a water fountain. <laughs> and I know water fountain, I, know, I ain't gonna even talk about the water fountain, but it's, she had a water fountain in her living room, but it, we see the shadow, a silhouette of a dude hiding behind it. I don't think nothing of it. To me, the water fountain and the dude is just random stuff that she's collecting. I don't mind it, right? She goes and she tries to walk toward the light to turn the light on. I was like, no, what are you doing? She's like, you don't see, you don't see the dude behind the fountain? I'm like, yeah. But you remember that one time we saw one roach in the kitchen, you turn the light on, and all those roaches came out? <laughs> I don't want you to hit the light and more dudes come from behind that water fountain. Like, 
it's one of him. Leave this light off. <laughs> Ladies, be careful when you, uh, yep. Yeah, I'm looking down because I want to look at all of y'all face right now. <laughs> be careful when, <laughs> when you landscape your paradise area. Uh, men love it when you do it. So don't not do it. Men love it. And for, for most of us, it doesn't even matter like how you do it. If you want to do the whole baldy joint, do the whole baldy joint. If you want to do just the bikini line, do just the bikini line. I tell my wife all the time, let's be creative. <laughs> Shave it in patches. <laughs> Do little circles. We'll pretend they're polka dots. <laughs> Dye it pink and white. We'll come up with a name. Like we'll call you a little Minnie Mouse Playhouse. Like let's let's have fun. <laughs> I used to date a girl who did shapes every month. Every month she did a different shape. And for a while it was cool, right? She did the heart, she did a diamond. One month she did a star, but you know, like stars have points. Hers was kind of rounded. I don't like. I don't know if that's a star. It's more like a nebula, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> she did a down arrow one month, and I was like, I know where it is. Like I don't, I don't need the GPS, but no doubt, like, you got vagina maps. But okay. The one that got me. The one that got me was one month she did an exclamation point. In hindsight, I get it. In hindsight, she was going for like excitement, enthusiasm, bang! At the time, it didn't click. I've been in IT for 13 years. An exclamation point is how we represent a warning message. <laughs> <laughs> so when I saw it, I was like, well, hang on, hang on. I think a virus has been detected in your system. <laughs> I don't know if this is just a vagina script error or or if this is 404 unauthorized, I don't know if your cookies are disabled. I don't know what's happening, but we need to call Coochie Support and find out why your vagina is blue screening, because I cannot put this password in your login screen. This is hashtag safe mode. <laughs> I think being in IT does give me does give me a perspective about things that people who aren't in IT um, probably don't think about or probably don't see as readily as I do. Um, we're, right now, we're living in the digital era. So in the future, this era that we're in now will be historically known as the digital era. Everything is moving over to digital processes. One of those areas um, I think is gonna happen probably in our lifetime, it's gonna happen in the next 20, 30 years, we're gonna change how we wear clothes. We're gonna change the game of fabric. We're not gonna have physical fabric. We're gonna have, we're gonna wear digital clothes. Like you've seen it in some of your superhero movies. You wear a watch, a bracelet, a necklace, you press a button, then you get your outfit. <laughs> I legitimately believe that we're moving toward that direction, which is gonna be so cool, so many benefits, right? You don't have to fill up all your closets in your home. You keep it on the, <laughs> keep it on the chain, keep it on the watch, respect. If you go somewhere, Somebody has on the same outfit, you press a button, change your whole outfit. Yeah. It's, um, what, what worries me, though, and what worries me is like questions that wives ask their husbands. Um, this is one of those, I've only been married for six years, so I don't, I don't know if this question ever goes away. But it's the, do I look fat in this dress question. Uh, some I hear men laughing. <laughs> it's like, nope, I guess it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but we'll have to answer that differently when we get to the digital clothes area, right? Like, I, can, I can only imagine, do I, do I look fat in this dress? Like, no, no, baby, you don't, you don't look fat in that dress. But you know you downloaded an 80 megabyte dress. <laughs> but you wear 120 megabytes. <laughs> you don't look fat, but you do look compressed. Now, unzip that file and email that back to Target. And <laughs> out here in JPEGs, and you know you PDF. Like, so. <laughs> My foot fetish is deep, man. My foot fetish is deep. There's a girl I used to date. Uh, she didn't have big feet, so I, I enjoyed uh, kissing her toes. Uh, but she was a moaner. 
I don't think I have to explain that uh, further. But <laughs> here's the deal. So here's here's the deal. I don't know. I can't. There are like a thousand sex nerves in the toes. Uh, just just so you know. So uh, y'all can use that at home. If you want to spice up your intimacy, rub her feet, kiss her toes, do all that good stuff. So this girl. Uh, now normally, she would separate her moans, which uh, which which was good. That made sense. <laughs> it was uh. It was when she blended her moans is when it got weird. Right, because normally, normally it's ah, mm, ooh. Perfect. Take a breath, take a pause, all good. And I don't know if I was you know, going too fast, doing too much, she was getting too excited. I don't know what happened, but it's when she blended her moans together and that's when it got weird, right? I'm kissing her toes, I'm kissing her toes. And she's wah, mm, ooh, cool, cool, kiss her toes, kiss her toes, ah, mm, ooh, kiss her toes, kiss her toes, kiss her toes. And she's, ah, moo! And I'm like, what? Wait a minute. I wasn't sure what happened, but this is game time. This is sexy mode. I don't want to break what's happening, right? So I jump into game mode, right? For whatever reason, she wants to be a cow. I don't know what kind of role play we're doing, but I'm not afraid. This is, this is what I do. I suck toe. This is what I do. You want to be a cow? Okay, cool. How do I make this symbolic? I don't really know, but right now, I'm going to be a tiger. We're going to tiger toe this thing. I am, I'm, rah, rah, kiss her toes, kiss her toes. She's moo, I'm, nah, rah, then she started making other sounds. Right, we was done with that. We went on to all other kind of animals. She's bad, bad. I'm, yeah, ah. She goes, oink, oink, and that's when I stopped. I was like, you know I don't put pork in my mouth. Like, don't. <laughs> what we're doing with these piglets, but let's, <laughs> but we are gonna stop that right here. But I'm all for it, man. Kiss the toes. I used to drink a lot. I used to drink a lot. Um, when I say a lot, I used to drink too much. Let's say that as I, because I still drink a lot. Some I see some friends looking at me like, dude, you still. <laughs> but I, I don't overindulge now. I'm, I'm responsible. Well, more responsible than what I was. Um, super drunk. This was years ago. Um, this is before uh, Uber was very popular and before I had uh, friends who would stop me. Uh, <laughs> so. I, I had bad friends back then. I was like, yeah, dude, you're fine. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm driving home. I'm, uh, I, come from, I was coming from Short Pump, Virginia. I live in Chesterfield. Uh, so there's a highway that you have to take to get to my house. It's 64 West. So I'm driving, uh, well, 64 East, I'm sorry. So I'm driving uh, 64 East, getting back home, and I'm swerving across all five lanes on 64 East. Uh, but 64 East has three lanes. <laughs> but to a drunk person, <laughs> the left shoulder was a lane, and the dirt on the right, the little bumpity bumpity part, the little, that little strip, that was a lane that night. So I'm swerving across all five lanes, and I see what looks like a police car hiding up ahead. In my drunk mind, I'm thinking, okay, I'm already speeding, I'm already swerving. <laughs> I'm super intoxicated. I'm not going to try to drive past him and make him chase me and come up with extra charges. In my drunk mind, I want the least amount of charges that I can get, so I didn't even wait for him to turn his lights on. I just pulled over in front of him and turned my car off. Five minutes goes by, and he never gets out of his car, so now I'm pissed. I'm all the times y'all done pulled me over for doing 58 on a 55, or because I'm black. Like, I know that I'm speeding, and I'm black, and I'm drunk, and you don't get out the car. Like, I deserve, I deserve to be taken to jail. So now I'm mad, and I'm flipping it on him in my mind. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to arrest this officer for not doing his job. So I set it in my mind to put my citizen's arrest motion in plan. I get out of my car. I'm yelling, citizen's arrest. This is citizen's arrest. I have no idea how citizen's arrest work. Or if we're supposed to use it against cops or each other, I have no idea. 
I am drunk and I'm running back to his car. Citizens arrest. Officer, officer, open your window. I need your name. I need your badge. I need your license, your registration. Do you know why I pulled myself over? Like I am, I'm yelling at this guy. And he rolls down his window and he looks at me with a straight face. And he's like, son, this is a roadside assistance vehicle. Road side assistance. That's an R, that's an O, that's an A, that's a D. S, that's a, it's sure enough. It's sure enough. It was a roadside assistance vehicle. But I'm drunk and you can't win an argument against me. I'm like, yeah, but them lights on your car make you look like a cop. He's like, son, these are yellow lights. Cops lights are red and blue. <laughs> I'm like, well, they all primary colors. Like, you, you could have just been a cop from a different state, which is not how it works. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so you can't, you can't write me a ticket. And you can't take me to jail. He was like, that's the good news. The bad news is you have low sperm count. I'm like, dude, how? What is this? Somebody's trying to tell me something. <laughs> I used to work for a call center. I used to work for a call center. Uh, anybody here work for a call center? Call center? Call center? So we do have a few people here who work for a call center. Okay, excellent. I used to work for a company called Capital One. It's a credit card company. Uh, nothing bad to say about Capital One. Nothing bad to say about credit card companies in general. Nothing bad to say about call centers in general. <laughs> But I do have something to say about this particular, this particular call center at this particular company for this particular time. I'm gonna preface it that way. Um, it's one of those monotonous type of deals because you say the same thing all day, every day. Right? All day, it was, thank you for calling Capital One. Thank you for calling Capital One. Thank you for calling Capital One. Now, Capital One happened to be one of those companies that as long as you get the greeting correctly, it doesn't matter what you say on the rest of the call. They just need you to greet the customer, say hello correctly, that's the script. After that, a little more flexible, but you have to greet the customer correctly. And after a few months of this, I got bored. I don't like being bored, I like to have fun. I'm a comedian, how do I make this work for me? How do I enjoy myself? So during lunch, I started going to the bar. Right? <laughs> Getting really drunk before the second shift. Right? And that's when I had a ball. <laughs> This went on for about a month, and it was, it was so cool, because for about a month, on the second half of my shift, I didn't even talk to customers when they called in. I would just, I would do all the talking. I wouldn't let none of them speak in. None of them speak. Soon as they call in, I'm looking up, I'm looking at the name, I'm looking at the card that they entered on the little phone dial. I'm, oh, thank you for calling Capital One. Hey, look, uh, you need a credit limit increase. Here you go. Well, you have six white late fees. I'm gonna waive all of those. Like, I'm, I'm doing, the customers loved me, right? I was so nice. People who didn't even have credit card accounts. I was like, what's your brother's name? Okay, I'm gonna give him a credit limit increase. You borrow money from him. Like, I'm, I was killing it. But I guess I got a little too intoxicated one day. Uh, and this is when I messed up. Because like I said, as long as you greet the customer correctly, you can get away with the rest of the call. This one day I was answering the calls. They were called in. I was, thank you for calling Capital. Not three, not two. Capital one, one, one. <laughs> Most of the customers thought that was hilarious. But I got this one real irate dude. He just, how dare you answer my small business account? Such an undignified. I was like, whoa, 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 sir. I am way too drunk for you to be talking that fast. It's <laughs> like, how dare you? Let me speak to your manager. I was like, uh, absolutely not. <laughs> but why not? Because like, you gonna tell on me. Sir, I said I was drunk, not stupid. <laughs> Apparently I was stupid. Capital One records all their phone calls. <laughs> I got fired while I was talking to Mr. Johnson by the quality assurance robot. Like, I didn't even know they had that kind of authority. <laughs> I'm explaining to Mr. Johnson how good my Long Island IC was and how bad his credit is. And all I heard was, beep, Jaye, please transfer the call. <laughs> Pack your bags and go home. Se habla espanol o primo, numero dos. 
I tried to be funny. I pressed two. She picked up. She's like, fool, you don't speak Spanish. You are fired. <laughs> I went to work at a 911 call center right after that. Well, I went on an interview because uh, I thought those calls would be different. <laughs> I was excited. I did so well in the interview, but part of their interview process is mock emergency response calls. So I'm thinking, oh, dude, I've been doing customer service. I've been doing the call center forever. I got, I got this. This is easy. I got this in the bag. The script, the script was, this is 911. What's your emergency? That's the opening script, right? From there, there's a call and response type of guidelines that they give, but that's the first line. This is 911. What's your emergency? I don't know if it was muscle memory or if I still had a hangover or what. <laughs> Uh, I don't even know if I drank before going to an interview. I can't remember. But, but some clicked. And as soon as the ring, 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 I pick up. I was like, this is nine, not three, not two, one, 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 which is too many ones, right? <laughs> and then all I heard was, how dare you answer my emergency phone call? I was like, wait a minute, Mr. Johnson, like, what are you? <laughs> like, how did you, how did you get here? <laughs> Beep, Jaye, you will not get this job. Say, I bless my y'all. I was like, dude. <laughs> I don't donate blood. Um, yeah. Not a, not a blood donor. Uh, I've been asked. This is a, so, all right, let me, I'll share this. Um, I have sickle cell trait. Um, so for most of my life, I thought I couldn't donate because I have sickle cell trait. I've only recently learned that I can still donate and they have like some filtration process to get the sickle out or whatever they do, but, it's, <laughs> but I still don't. Uh, <laughs> and part of it is because I don't really understand, and maybe this is on me, I, can, I should do my research, because uh, I don't know how blood donations work. Like, I, the way I feel is my body produces all the blood that it's supposed to have. Like I, <laughs> why, why am I gonna give you what I'm supposed to have and then make my heart work harder? Like, I, I think the statistics are like heart disease is one of the highest things that's taking people out. Is it caused because they donate blood? I don't know. I don't know the relationship, <laughs> but I don't want to make my heart work harder if I don't have to. Like if I bleed out of my eyes or out of my ears for no reason, you can have that blood because that's, <laughs> that's the extra blood. That's, that's, that's for you. Like I but for me, my body produces what it's supposed to have. So this, that's, my, that's my mindset, right? <laughs> um, but I, sick of cell, um, I, I used to, I, well, I can't even say I used to date this girl. I can't even say that. I went on a date uh, <laughs> with, with a girl. It was our first and last date. And uh, I thought it was interesting because she said, can you share something with me that you don't normally share on the first date, but you don't mind sharing? I'm like, oh, that is an interesting question. Sure, uh, I have sickle cell trait. I don't normally share that on the first date, but I don't mind it. So whatever, I have sickle cell trait. She's like, oh my God. And she started crying. She's like, oh, oh my God, how? How long do you have? <laughs> it's like, what? No, no, baby girl, I don't, have, I don't have anemia. Anemia is a disease, I just have the trait. So I'm fine. She's like, oh, well, what do you do to keep it from becoming anemia? I'm like, wait, do you not? <laughs> okay, uh, I don't do anything. It's, 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 it's in your genes. It's, that's, that's, how it, that's, that's how it works. She's like, oh, well. That's why I always wear skirts. I said, wait, <laughs> you can't be this. <laughs> Our first and last dates. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I don't donate blood. Um, and I have friends to challenge me because they think that, you know, I, I'm a giving person. I'm a servant by nature. I'm a servant at the core of my character. Um, I give as much as I can give. There's time, money, energy, attention. I am a giver, so people challenge me when I say that I don't donate blood, and then they, I had some snarky person, like, well, aren't you, aren't you an organ donor? Don't your driver's license say you're an organ donor so you can donate your organs, but you don't donate? I'm like, well, uh, you misjudge, because I'm also not an organ donor, like, <laughs> for the same principles. Like, I don't, I don't really know how any of this was, I'm not giving away my organs. To, and he was like, well, no, 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 not while you're alive. It's, it's what happens when you die, somebody tried to explain. It's when you die, they take your organs. You're not gonna need your organs when you're dead. And I'm like, well, you don't know how my death is gonna work. Like, I don't know how it's gonna be when you die, 
But my faith says, what if I die? I meet God. The doctor takes my lung. God says, hey, I'm not done with you yet and gives me my life back. So three minutes later, I wake up. Now I got asthma because I got one lung. Nope. And I already got low sperm count. So no, I'm not. You are not getting my organs. (laughs) I used to date a girl who had really bad acne. Never bothered me. Look right past it. So she was very self-conscious and insecure about it. Every day she used to talk about how ugly she felt, how bad she felt. She didn't want to go out, tons of makeup. And every day I told her, you're beautiful. You don't need all that makeup. Why are you feeling bad about it? You are an amazing person. You're beautiful. I used to kiss her on her forehead. I closed my eyes. But, <laughs> but I kissed her on the forehead every day. I told her, <laughs> told her, you're beautiful. I'm doing all these things to try to uplift her and make her feel better about herself. This was our relationship. Valentine's Day comes around. Y'all know my history. Not great with Valentine's Day gifts, but uh, I'm trying again. It's like, okay, think outside the box, outside the box. So Valentine's Day, I order, this, it cost me $1,000. So here, $1,000. I order a six-month subscription to Advanced Proactive for her. Shut up, don't do that. <laughs> See, she was the one who was mad. Right? I'm telling her that she's beautiful for the, all the months that we've been together. I'm the one telling her that she's beautiful, that she's gorgeous, that she doesn't need makeup. This whole time she's complaining, so don't y'all look at me with those faces. I don't, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> so I spent $1,000 out of my hard-earned money to get this six months. It's only six months. $1,000 for six months. So proactive, they making bank. She didn't like the gift. She didn't, she, why would you think that I would like this? I'm like, well, baby girl, you the one who said, I thought I was doing, I'm right here thinking I'm being thoughtful. She's like, no, well, we're going to have to break up. I can't deal with this. You make me feel so ugly now, blah, blah, blah. She walked off. And in my mind, I'm logic before I'm emotion. As a married man, I'm learning how to flip that. But at the core, I'm logic before emotion. So when she said that, like, I hate to be a stickler of words, but I was like, hold on, where you going? Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean? I make you feel ugly now. Cause you've been ugly the whole eight months. <laughs> We've been dating. Like what? Like, I'm trying to change that for you. Like I thought, I feel like, like as a man of faith, I feel like God put me here with the resources to be able to spend a thousand dollars on a cosmetic application. Like how, what do you mean now? Like baby, you're beautiful. This is what I've been telling you the whole time. Nope, none of that flew. We broke up. Cool. Three months later, June, see her in the club, almost didn't recognize her because her face clear. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? I, look, I did a double take. I'm like, wait a minute, that is okay. So I don't trip. I don't even trip. I tried to pick her where we left off. Hey, we had some bad times. Sorry for the argument last time we talked. Uh, you know, I'm doing, trying to say some smooth things to pick up where we left off. And she's, nah, nope, not no more. I got a new man who appreciates all of me for who I am. And that's when I lost it. I'm like, how? How? Are you kidding me? Show him a before Jaye picture and see if he's still here. Are you? How dare you mean he oh, for all of me for who I am? No, no. You know how hard it was for me to lick you on your face? Remember we used to play Freak Me Baby, lick me up and down, and I would go from the toe to your forehead, and I would do like this on your face, telling you I was spelling my name. I was dodging the volcanoes. Are you kidding me? You owe me looking pretty like this. You, you, you owe me one night. <laughs> She wasn't feeling it. She wasn't feeling it. So I was like, well, you got three months left on that subscription. <laughs> like, you will see. If you're still with him after September, let's see what. <laughs> and it, it doesn't bother me now, but I do recall. I was, I was bothered because this was years ago. And like, I haven't been able to keep up with her to see if she's still. <laughs> see if she looked like before or if she got her own subscription. Like, she blocked me on Facebook, so I can't. I can't even I can't even find out. And I'm like, I'm not gonna look on my wife's phone through her Facebook. I don't even want that history to show up. But, so I don't have no other ooh. Jasmine Carter. Her name is Jasmine Carter. Uh look her, somebody here looking, where's the camera? Which camera am I looking at? Uh whoever's online, uh Jasmine Carter. Google her on Facebook, Instagram, shoot me a message. Tell me what she looks like. I'm curious. I am 
don't do that. I'm joking. Don't, uh, don't do that. Uh, I'll never forget I did that joke at a, at a college. I didn't think about how adolescent students can be, but I had students come to me after this show. Well, how do you spell Jasmine? Is it with an S or with a Z? And does she have an E on the end? Because there are 15 Jasmine Carters on Facebook. I'm like, don't. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I don't mind straight men. I don't mind gay men. What I do mind is straight men who do gay men stuff and still say they're straight. It's not, <laughs> not if, you, if you do gay stuff that makes you gay, that's, that's, that's simple math. And I ain't got no problem with you, we can be friends, but just, just don't tell me that you all on the, I don't, nah. If you do gay stuff that makes you gay, we can still be cool, I, I ain't tripping off that. I had a homeboy Moved to Atlanta out of the blue from <laughs> Richmond. Right. He, this is a homeboy who I thought was close enough that he would give me an advance notice if he's moving out of state. But on Tuesday, he told me, hey, man, I'm out of here on Thursday. I'm moving to Atlanta. Here's the deal. Atlanta happened to be one of the highest gay black populated cities that we have in this country. It's also an entertainment startup city, and my boy wanted to be an actor, so I didn't even question the move. <laughs> right? The move a couple years, goes by, and I plan a visit. Talk to him the night before I visit. Yo, bro, get some rest tonight. When I get there tomorrow, we gonna party. He's like, all right, dog. Night, night. <laughs> I was like, wait. Perhaps he was moving real fast. <laughs> he could have been, this is probably how he normally talks to his son. And he's just going so fast, his muscle memory, I don't trip off night, night, right? I drive to Atlanta, eight and a half hours from Richmond. I drive down. Knock on his door. He comes to the door dripping wet. He just got out the shower. He has a pink towel on. Here's the deal. I ain't got no problem with him wearing a pink towel. Could have been man towel laundry day. He ain't feel like washing clothes. He put on his wife's towel. I ain't tripping off the color pink. I ain't tripping that he just got out the shower. Men, we could answer the door. We just got out the shower. We're men. I ain't tripping off of that. I was tripping because his towel was wrapped up here. Across his chest. Talking about he had a scar he didn't want nobody to see. I'm like, is a scar really that big? You need a whole towel to cover it. He's like, actually, it's real, real ugly, but it's actually kind of petite. I say this dude would just say petite to describe a scar on his. But whatever, we go upstairs, right? Every other step. His ding dong is playing peekaboo. I'm like, dude, I would, I would, I would rather see the scar. <laughs> this, I, this is, I don't want to see this. <laughs> But that's only two strikes. I'm a three and out type of dude. That's only two strikes. I ain't tripping. We catch up on old times, all good. Then he says, Jaye, let's play some basketball. I'm thinking, how can this go wrong? This is how I met the brother, right? After the game, he pats me on the butt. Good game, Jaye. Athletes have been doing this for years. I don't know why. Never questioned it till he did it. And it wasn't even that he touched me sexually. The problem that I had was the basketball game we played was on PlayStation 4. Like, dude, <laughs> you're going to do some gay stuff that makes you. <laughs> I'll share with you guys why, um, why I am the way that I am. I don't, know if this, I don't know if this necessarily says why I am, but it'll share some insights. Um, I mentioned I was raised by my mom and my grandmother. Um, I'm going to share my, grandma, my grandmother's cadence, the way that she talks. Very soft-spoken, but she cursed. Uh, and it, and it, can, it can be weird because she maintained such a soft and easygoing cadence and rhythm to her tone that like, even when she's mad at you and when she's cursing you out, it kind of sounds polite. <laughs> right? She said, well, baby, here, let me tell you something. Um, you're so handsome. You're so smart. You're going to go really far in life. Watch out for the fast hoes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that was her life. That was one of her life lessons. <laughs> I 
But I enjoyed growing up with my mom and my grandma. Told me so much. Uh, when my grandmother got saved, uh, she got saved when I was 12. And then she, she was my first introduction to God. Uh, after she was saved, she told me, she said, hey, uh, I got something to share with you. I said, okay, Grandma. She said, well, you are a gift from God. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You're going to make it far if you put God first. But remember, watch out for those fast holes. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you got to let the holes go when you find Jesus. <laughs> but being married, my faith, how I grew up, I don't like when I talk to other people and they use my faith. They use the Bible um, in ways that they, they, they misinterpret the Bible, for, le- for lack of a better word. Um, I have people talk about the Bible says that the man is supposed to be the provider, the protector. The woman is supposed to be submissive to the husband. I'm like, okay, but where, where are you going with that, bro? Like, I was in the gym talking to a dude who, who's sharing that with me. And he, so he told me that's what he uses as his support because he doesn't allow his wife to work. I said, I don't... And, and I thought that was just a weird word, allow, but okay, you don't allow your wife to work. He's like, nope, all she does is cook and clean. I make all the, I make all the money, I put all the food on the table, I do this, I do that, I take care of the house. All she does is cook and clean. And he uses that piece of the Bible to, to support his theology there. And I'm like, mm, I hear you, uh, but I'm going to have to disagree uh, the Bible does say those things. It does say what you just said. We are supposed to be the provider and protector. She is supposed to be submissive. But to submissive to the husband as he submits to Christ. Also, God made men and women equal. She's your helpmate, your partner in your life. Like, so why? Why would you limit her? Like, in my house, not only does my wife cook and clean, I also make her cut the grass, <laughs> assemble furniture. <laughs> Right now, she's building a doghouse. She's not even here. She's building a doghouse home out of acorn shells. Like, this is, you got to use her for all of what she's built for. Like, she, don't limit her, bro. Like, just cooking and cleaning. She can do more than that. <laughs> don't she do it? And she goes to work. I don't do none of that. <laughs> I had y'all clapping at first. It was like, yeah, preach. <laughs> I'm glad I'm married now, man. I am glad I'm married. I come to church with my wife, which is cool. So we have the, we share faith. Uh, so to come to church here is always awesome. We praise together. We pray together. I used to date a girl who, uh, she, did, she didn't have good church etiquette. Uh, and it's one of those, it's one of those situations where, you know, uh, like how bands will play. And you can't, if you're trying to talk to somebody, but you can't really hear, so you talk louder. But then the band does this silent shut up thing, like all of a sudden. And now when you're just talking at a regular tone, it sounds like you're yelling something. Like, that's, that's an experience that I had. And I'm mad that this girl chose the conversation subject that she chose. We were in church, and the band's playing. And she's like, well, I think I'm ready to have sex. And like I said, so nobody could hear us at first, right? But it just so happened that in my response is when the band shuts up, and now it sounds like I'm yelling something inappropriate to her in the back of the church. Because I'm like, well, what do you mean? You think you're ready to have sex? But I thought you said you wanted to wait. And all of a sudden, now you ready to have sex? Ooh. Ooh, this is not. Lord, nobody should be ready to have sex. Oh, praise Jesus, we are good. We are, let's remove the spirit of, I'll try to go into prayer. Nobody's falling for it. <laughs> nobody's falling for it. And all I heard, all I heard was this lady on the end. She said, what I told you about them fast hoes. I was like, Grandma, how? <laughs> if you don't shut up before I roll you down these steps. <laughs> hey, guys, thank you so much for your time and for your attention today. There's this little white girl I hate. Yeah, I had.
had to take my jacket off to get to share that. Huh? Her name is Kaylee. That's probably not important to most of you here. Uh, but in case some of you do know her and whoever's looking online, Kaylee, her parents are Jake and Karen. She's blonde. She has blue eyes. She should be 13 now. She's still alive. I don't know. But I've been hating her since she was four. So this is a nine-year grudge hate. Kaylee, here's the story. What happened, nine years ago, I lived in an apartment. I ran out of that apartment real fast. Kaylee, she's on her big wheel. She laughs at me. <laughs> you fell down. I don't think nothing of it. She's a kid. I'm like, ha, ha, ha. I see you fall off your little big wheel all the time. She's like, ha, ha, yeah, but you're black. And that's all she says. Instinctively, I wanted to go and kick Kaylee off the bike. Right? But as a black person, I can't go kicking little white girls and thinking I'm going to be OK. Like, we get shot for less than that. So, so the most I can do, and like, this, is my, this is where my faith comes in, the most I could do was pray. And to this day, I don't know if I've ever prayed so hard in my life for someone to get kidnapped. I got really wanted Kaylee to go missing. It was, Lord, please send the van down this street. In Jesus' name. As <laughs> soon as I opened my eyes, Comcast cable van came flying down the street. I'm like, won't he do it? <laughs> won't he do it? Won't he do it? 